Two more works by different authors. We're going to use an alphabetical order separated by a semicolon. Let's take a look at this case, which is super, super common. Several studies, parentheses, parentheses, have supported this relationship. This is probably one of the most common uses of the way you're going to be inline citation. That is, you have an idea, and this idea has multiple papers you've drawn from, multiple papers and books. You're going to pull them in. Here, this is a simple example. We just have a two. But in reality, most of your writing, you're going to have five or six because you're doing your literature review. You're taking many ideas. You're putting them, the main things together, like a kind of puzzle, like a block, right? So in this case, how do we put those together? Because we have one paper from Miller and one paper from Shafransky and Mahoney. So how do we put these together? We're going to use alphabetical order. So that is M comes before S. That's the way we do it. Not by date. Because look at the date. 1999, 1998. 99 is later. We're not doing it by date here. We're doing it by the name. These are different people. This is a different case than when we just talked about. Let me jump back here real fast. I'm afraid you're going to get confused. It's very easy to get confused by this. Jump back. Go back a little bit. What was this case here? This case was one author, multiple papers from different years. Same author, multiple papers from different years. That is quite different from the case of different author. One author, different author. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's look at a special case such as this. Special case of supporting work. You can say see also. How does that work? Let's look at this example. Minor 2001. So here we have an author, we have a date. Here we have an author, here we have a date, comma, in between. Here we have an author, here we have a date. What we've done here is we have this little special case where we say, hey, see also. So our main reference is this, minor 2001. This is the idea. I took this idea I'm writing about from this person here. However, there are also other authors that are similar or have more information. Then I'm going to say, see also. It's hard to know when to use this case because you could just write it out as we see in the first example. Sometimes I use this when I have the special situation where there's maybe an author who is the key point, but then there's another author that has done a kind of overall research or supporting research or meta-analysis. That is, they've analyzed many papers. I don't want to list all those papers. But you know, if you go read that person's paper, you can see many other papers in his reference list. He's reviewed many others in a meta-analysis. In that case, I like to use C also because I'm saying, Find that person and you can see a lot. But that's not really my main idea. My main idea is, in this case, minor 2001. But if you go look at Adams, you can find a lot of supporting material. Thus, we can say that C also. Okay, secondary sources. What is a secondary source? A secondary source is a special case where I am reading a research paper or I'm reading a book and I see an idea and that idea has a reference and it says that somebody wrote this idea. But you know what? I cannot find that paper. I cannot find that original book. Let me see if I can draw that to be more clear. 
So let's say there's an example. I'm reading a research paper. And inside this paper, there's an idea. We're going to call it idea A. It's a great idea, A. And this idea A has a reference, and it's Smith. 1905. Well, maybe because it's 1905, it's a little bit hard to find. Maybe it's been not categorized or not logged in some kind of database. Maybe it's in a special library of special books, and there's no list I can find, and I cannot get to that library. What do I do? So I would like to cite this. I would like to, in my paper, write Smith, 1905. But I need to get more information, don't I? In the next part, in the next lesson, we're going to learn about the reference. And when you write your reference list, you need to have things like the name, the year, the publication date, maybe the publisher, the page number. You need to have a lot more information. Where do you get that information from? You need to go to the source, the original, the source. What if we cannot find the source? That's this case. Thus. In this situation, I cannot find Smith. But I can find this research paper here. And this research paper is by Evans. And this research paper was published in 2015. And this research paper I can find. But this, what, this one here, I cannot find. So what can I do? This is called secondary source. Smith is the original source. Evans is the secondary source. The secondary source, not the original source. So what can I do in that case? Well, I'm kind of stuck. Now, APA is very clear about this. You should find original sources. When you are reading a research paper and you see an idea and they reference someone like Smith, you should not copy that and say, oh, this is just like Smith's idea. No, you must find Smith's paper. APA is very clear, and so is MLA. You should not copy other people's references and just write down the idea from another paper. You need to read the original paper. You need to find it. However, if you cannot, really you cannot, and I <laughs> You can then use it as a secondary source. But this is highly discouraged. Absolutely not a good thing to do very much. Maybe just some time. I have to tell you that I've been in defenses of dissertations and a thesis where a reviewer will ask or a um, committee member will ask the student presenting, this reference, what is this from? What does this mean? Did you read that paper? And the student will be put on the spot and say, well, no, I didn't really read that paper. I copied it from another paper. This reference was copied from another paper. And then once this happens, the committee member is very easy to say, well, how many did you do that way? Did you read any papers for this research? And things get sticky very fast, very dangerous thing to do. But the a APA does have a way to do this officially, and that is right here, as cited in. So in this case, Allport's diary, I would like to cite this, but I cannot find it. However, there is another person, Nicholson. He wrote about Allport's diary. So I can cite Nicholson, 2003, as cited in. In. Allport's diary, as cited in, shows an interest in this research. Okay? So, this is the way to do it officially, but you don't want to do it much. And you certainly don't want to cheat and write references that you really didn't read. What about classical works? That is, 
ancient works or works that are very common that everyone has uh, cited before or, or is just commonly known. These are often called classical works. In this case, you can use the year of the version because there's been so many translations or versions. Or you can try to use the year of the version and the original date of the publication. For example, this is a Greek philosopher, Aristotle. Here we have Aristotle, comma, translated 1931, or James, 1890, and the translation is 1983. Those are going to be more uncommon, especially for scientific research or uh, humanities research related to business. But it would be much more common in research in uh, language literature area. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, source information. When you cite a source, you can indicate the page number, the chapter, the figure, the table, or the equation. So for example, when I'm going to cite something specific, here is Centers of Disease Control and Prevention. That is not an author because the author in this case is not a person but an organization. So I go ahead and cite that. Comma the year and then comma P10, which means a single page. 1P means page 10. Um, one, one P means one page and 10 means the 10th page. Shamamura, 1989, chapter 3. So in this case, I'm citing the ideas that are all inside chapter 3. So it's probably a book from 1989. What if I have personal communication, such as emails, letters, or conversations, or memos? We can go ahead and put that into our papers also. So for example here, T.K. Lutz, this is the person who sent me something. What did he send me? He sent me a personal communication. So I go ahead and I write personal communication, comma, what's the month, April, 18, comma, and year. And here you can see that the month goes first and then the day goes second. Month, day, comma, 2001, and that's the year. So pay attention because in different styles this can be quite different. So in APA it's month, day, comma, year. Figure this out here. V.G. Nagin, Personal Communication, September 28, 1998. Again, month, day, year, with a comma. And here we have the person's name, and we're all inside the parentheses. Here we're outside the parentheses, which is okay, because that's the author of it. That's the source of the information, the person. Lastly, we have something called the DOI, or the Digital Object Identifier. And the Digital Object Identifier is something that's kind of new. And it's a way for us to cite information that is findable or discoverable on the internet or through databases. And of course, the idea here is we want to have a number so that we can find information in the future and that location does not change. Now it used to be everything is on paper, the paper is bound in a book, the book is put in a library, it's put on a shelf, and people in different libraries around the world would be able to find it because it has the same name, the same volume number, the same issue number. That's still true, but because everything can now be converted to digital, we would like to have a location we can find these, and that's called the Digital Object Identifier. Now, we're going to We'll look at that a little bit later when we look at some examples in the reference list. You won't be using that so much in the citations, which is inside your, your writing, inside your sentences. But you possibly could in a special case. Okay, so that kind of wraps up those rules. Again, the APA is kind of overwhelming sometimes. In fact, often when I'm doing the APA, it's like, whoa, my head's exploding, all of these rules, right? The thick book of rules of APA. But it actually can feel good because everything you need to cite has a rule. You just need to check it out and make sure you're following the right one. Don't make it up. Follow the rule. Good luck with your APA references.